Hi, folks. Today, I will share with you a continuous method tracing tool with extremely low overhead called Hubble. It's frequently used to debug intermittent performance problems on Android device in production. And it is shipped on all supported and upcoming Android phones from Huawei in China. So what do we mean by intermittent performance problems? These are issues that appear randomly on users' phones and often disappear after a very short period of time. Let's illustrate this with a common bug that I'm sure many of you have experienced. Say when a user tries to type OSDI on their keyboard and suddenly it becomes unresponsive. A second later, the performance problem disappears. And this lag could result in typing an extra character. And it not only annoys the user now, but down in the future, it will lead to people hating their phones and the brand associated with them. But why do we focus on intermittent performance problems? Are there any more other bugs like fail stop or crashes which are more important? Well, not really. Because for two reasons. First, code changes have to pass through many stages of function and performance testing on app developers and system vendor side before they can be shipped to production. As a result, the bugs that are caught in testing are those are highly elusive. They require a very rare combination of events and environmental factors to trigger, exactly like those intermittent bugs. The second reason is that intermittent performance bugs are the most painful ones to debug because engineers don't have the sufficient diagnostic data. Only extremely sparse traces are available. Sometimes there are uh, very low quality application logs, but surprisingly, Google actually officially recommends turning all logs off before release. And finally, there are some periodic stats between system and hardware layer. That's it. Unlike a fail stop bug, where once it fails, we can afford to immediately enable effective heavyweight and tracing and logging. Unlike after a fail stop bug, however, where we can have, uh, <coughs> for intermittent bugs that go away quickly, collecting fine grain tracing traces by the time that we detect a bug is already too late. What we're missing here is debugging is the sequence of events leading up to the bug. To be honest, I really pity those e interns that were assigned to reproduce these bugs without progress for weeks on end. It's not uncommon to have open bug tickets stretching month up to year. When the bug cannot be fixed, it's often the system vendors like Huawei that bite the bullet. When a non-tech savvy user experience an intermittent performance problem. They often try to reproduce the problem on another phone. But given the intermittent nature, the problem likely won't appear very soon. So they conclude that they simply have a crappy phone. Similarly, for application developers, when they can't reproduce the problem on other phones, they blame the system vendors. In reality, the problem could be anywhere. And it's only because it's intermittent that the problem does not manifest at a certain time or certain environment. This results in rounds of finger pointing between system vendors and application developers, but all without concrete evidences. Regardless of whose fault it is, in the end, it is Huawei and indirectly the Android ecosystem that is losing market share. The fundamental problem here is lack of runtime diagnostic data. Hubble is designed to solve this problem by continuously performing method trace on every single Java method for both application and runtime layer without sampling. The trace points are stored in an in-memory ring buffer where the oldest data points will be overwritten. It has negligible performance and memory overhead suitable for production use. Specifically, the amortized trace latency for each trace point is less than one nanosecond. 
and when intermittent performance problem occur. Tracing is stopped and a couple minutes worth of method traces leading up to the failure is persist to disk. Hubble traces can be integrated into existing visual debugging tools such as SysTrace and Profeto. So developers can visually correlate the method traces with other diagnostic data or analyze them using SQL queries. As a result, developers can quickly narrow down the root cause with addition of Hubble method traces and avoid constant fingerprinting. Hubble also strives to protect user privacy. Existing error reporting systems such as Windows Error Reporting, Mac OS, or Firefox Crash Reports collects a mini dump of the memory image. In comparison, Hubble's traces are far less sensitive. They only contain the method name as well as the timestamp. They do not contain any variable values. And like all error reporting system, a consent is required to collect user data. Next, we will showcase a case study where how uh, Hubble helped diagnose a real intermittent bug on an internal app similar to Zoom. A small number of users reported that the app freezes for about a second after a video call ends. Some engineers were assigned to invest the problem. The first thing they did was look at the available diagnostic data. The only thing available, as you can see from the top image, is basically a single layer call graph suggesting that the application invoked a binder IPC call. That's it. There's no indication of what IPC call is doing. There's no obvious signs that uh, resource usage is wrong, for example, CPU, GPU, memory, etc. They also try to replicate the issue offline while using heavy weighted tracing utility to record exact sequence of events leading up to the problem. However, a week went by, they couldn't reproduce the problem. Not to mention that even if they could, the very act of method tracing would also cause other performance problems and it could hide actual root costs. Thankfully, Hubble was reached pre-beta in 2019. An over-the-air update was pushed to affected employees to enable Hubble functionality. Within a few days, method trace of subsequent event leading up to the intermittent performance problems was captured by Hubble. A quick glance at the UI on the bottom image shows the app was calling sleep from a UI thread after invoking binder IPC call. A closer inspection revealed that immediately after ending the video call, a series of method call related to audio manager was invoked. And with this new information, we brought on a engineer with audio stack experience. And he quickly identified the root cause. The bug can only be reproduced when a Bluetooth device is connected in a special mode during video chat. And when chat ended, audio was rerouted to a different device and switched to another Bluetooth streaming protocol. This rare process requires a much longer reinitialization process than a normal case, and problem is caused by sleep call being invoked until connection is reestablished. This fix was very simple. Just place the logic into a async event handler. But there are many method tracing tools like GProfs and tools like Deterministic Replay, or of which offers even finer grained traces. Why can't we implement them? It's because these tools are not suitable for continuous production use for Android devices due to a number of deployment hurdles. First is overhead. Whatever instrumentation you use in production, it has to be, uh, cannot exceed two to 3% in realistic workload. There's also a similar requirement for memory and the requirement doesn't stop here. The tool has to pass a number of rigorous performance tests without causing any regression. In addition, we cannot depend on application source code because we don't have access to them. Apps are published as bytecode and Android runtime interprets, JIT compiles, or ahead of time compiles the code on the device before execution. And this restriction also ruled out a large number of existing tracing tools. Next, code maintainability is extremely important for Huawei because as people know, Google publishes periodic updates for Android every six months or a year. Although APIs are fairly stable, 
the underlying uh, implementations contains major and incompatible changes. Simply put, anything that requires significant intrusive changes to the system layers are impossible to rebase and therefore uh, pretty much forbidden. Finally, ARM has big little architecture where an application can run on either a big powerful core capable of out of order execution or a small low power core that cannot. Hubble's tracing overhead needs to be negligible on both the big core and small core. And therefore, it cannot rely on advanced features like automatic instruction reordering, and we must perform them manually. We leveraged Android runtime compiler to embed the trace point into the application. We also modified the interpreter as well. We need to be careful when embedding trace point into the code because compilers can easily optimize the code out because there's no dependency with respect to the method that they're tracing. We avoid this by inserting the trace points at the last stage of the compilation flow after all the optimization passes. We also inline the trace point to avoid expensive trampolines and avoid uh, saving register to the stack. Hubble's trace point is written in hand optimized assembly for a few reasons. First, because we embedded the trace point at the last stage of compilation flow, so we had no choice. However, more importantly, the assembly gives us more control. At this level, we can take advantage of the runtime itself to more efficiently capture the method name and timestamp. Android runtime always places the current method pointer at specific CPU register upon method entry. So to record down the method name, we simply persist the method pointer from the CP register to the memory. Only when we persist the trace do we actually resolve the method name to its actual name. Similarly, we persist the clock cycle count system register for timing rather than a, a real-time clock. Efficiently gathering these trace data is almost impossible otherwise. Since Huawei also designed some of their own SOCs, we collaborated with a chip designer such that we can make precise uh, uh, control on what, when, where, and how trace points are placed and optimized for the uh, specific CPU architecture. We also used variable length trace point encoding that was amortized to only eight bytes per trace point or a single 64-bit integer. And this helped significantly with performance and maintainability of the assembly code. Hubble needs synchronizations. It uses a system control thread that turns trace on and off. Whenever a performance anomaly is detected, the system control thread needs to stop the tracing, say by setting a global variable. And only after trace is fully stopped in the application thread, the control thread can safely persist the trace. Now, evilly, we can use a shared variable protected by synchronization primitives. However, the overhead of regular atomic instruction-based synchronization primitives are way too expensive. Specifically, checking whether the trace is on or off every single trace point is on the critical path. So we have to use ad hoc synchronization, even if it goes against the advice of an OSDI paper written by my advisor's advisor. So we leverage a few opportunities specific to Android and Hubble. First, we have a local thread buffer for each thread, and there's a safe way to do ad hoc synchronization without atomic instruction-based synchronization primitive when there's exactly one producer and one consumer. In addition, we can tolerate some delays in the communication. For example, even if there are some delays between when we send the stop signal and when it's actually received, there isn't an issue because our trace buffer is large and we can still capture the events leading up to the failure. Check out the paper for more details. For evaluation, we couldn't really evaluate the performance overhead under, even under a controlled environment. However, we have designed a series of micro benchmark that are unrealistic to expose Hubble's overhead. Under those scenarios, the overhead is more than three orders of magnitude lower than commonly used method tracing tool for Android. And for those who are interested, it's described in the paper in detail. And I guess we're the victim of our, of our own success. In August 2020, Huawei shipped Hubble on its Android production branch. 
Early prototypes were merged into the main development branch in 2019, and engineers have been using it since then. Huawei offers a beta program where users can receive new experimental features before GA, and Hubble Trace is enabled there all the time. For other users, Hubble can only be enabled with express consent. Trace collection frequencies and retention periods vary depending on the type of user, the level of consent, operating regions, and local regulations. A common upload a policy is that at most three traces are uploaded. Which three traces upload is configurable. For example, we sometimes there are targeted campaigns to improve certain applications. Besides debugging issues in production, Hubble is equally useful for triaging and debugging for automated testing. Whenever regression is uh, detected, Hubble's traces are automatically collected along with all other diagnostic data, helping developers quickly narrow down the root cause, often without reproducing the problem. For takeaways, Hubble is a low overhead, continuous tracing tool that is specifically designed to solve the finger pointing problem when intermittent performance problem in production cannot be reproduced or diagnosed. Hubble code is available on all currently supported Huawei phones in China, and beta users have method trace enabled 24 seven for every single application. Engineers can now triage and quickly address hard to reproduce intermittent problems. And that's it for this talk. I can't talk on forever, but I think I'll open the floor for questions.